Today we want to tell you about the new ICS AirCal. We believe the best air irrigator, the NCA 200, just got better. I am Wendy Crumley Welsh, the business manager and audiologist for the ICS AirCal. Here's a picture of the ICS AirCal. If you look to the left, right here where the green light is glowing, that's the on switch. To the right is the display panel, and then you've got the irrigator head for irrigating the ear shown here. First, let's talk about precision. Precision is key to accurate diagnosis. The thermistor measures the temperature of the air. The thermistor is close to the tip, approximately 66 millimeters from the tympanic membrane, and ensures the temperature selected is precisely transmitted to the patient's ear. Irrigation can only occur if the temperature is within plus or minus 0.3 degrees of the set temperature. This ICS AirCal cools below room temperature, just like the NCA 200 did. The AirCal uses water to cool the air and delivers cool air from 12 to 37 degrees Celsius without condensation buildup. So here you can see the irrigator head. Airflow exits the delivery head and is approximately 14 millimeters from the tympanic membrane. The airflow is delivered from a precisely sized speculum. This is important because large volumes of air become turbulent and cause poor irrigation. So we need to make sure the volume of air that is entering into the ear canal is precisely the right size. The airflow is within plus or minus 0.4 liters per minute of the set flow rate. So precise temperature and flow rate are a must have. The ICS AirCal is as accurate as water irrigation because of these features. So let me point out a couple of things in these pictures. Here on the left hand side we actually have the irrigator head without the speculum on it. And as you notice, if you can look right here, there's a little bit of plastic that protrudes out. That little bit of section is where the air is coming out of the head. And this is why it's so important. That section is making sure the volume of air is correct and is not too large and does not become turbulent. The upper part is actually the viewing, where you view the eardrum through the otoscope head. And so we back that away from the end because we want to make sure you have a nice viewing as well as that you have precise airflow. Now what's really important to remember is you never put this into the patient's ear without the speculum attached onto it. You don't want to put this directly into the patient's ear. You want to always make sure you put on the specula before placing into the patient's ear. So if you look over here, you can see the whole irrigator, the cradle to hold the handle, set of specula, and the irrigator head with the specula attached. Let's talk about the specula. There's one specula size. As previously stated, the airflow is delivered from a precisely sized speculum. The speculum is sized so that it can be used for otoscopy and for delivering the air stimulus. There is no need to switch speculum, whether you're looking into the ear or actually doing a caloric irrigation. Now the other thing is, is some people ask, do you have a pediatric speculum or, and an adult speculum? Actually, we have one speculum. And what we have found, because this irrigator head was available on the NCA 200 for about a year and a half, is that the shape of it is actually working quite well for smaller ears. So we have not had the request for a smaller pediatric tip with this new irrigator head design. Now let's talk about the excellent visibility. You can easily view the tympanic membrane. So if you look here, this piece of glass actually slides out just like a normal otoscope. And you can see the nice big viewing angle. Now remember, it's not a complete circle because you got that little piece at the bottom where the air is coming out of. But you can see even through that hole that you've got a nice viewing of the tympanic membrane. And viewing of the tympanic membrane ensures that the stimulus is being delivered directly down the air canal. And proper delivery of the stimulus ensures consistent, effective irrigation. You want to make sure that that air is going down to the eardrum and is stimulating the patient properly. And this was very, very important because if you can't see where the air is going, you don't know if you're up against a canal wall, and you don't know that if a poor response is just due to user error or if it's really due to the patient has an abnormality on that side. Let's also talk about the bright LED light. Again, it's LED, so there's no need for, the bulb, for bulb replacement, which is great. You could easily view that tympanic membrane, ensuring that the stimulus is being delivered directly down the ear canal. And what's also nice was a recommendation from an end user 
is that when you push the trigger button, the light actually flashes on and off so that you know that the countdown timer has started. So you can make sure that you have the delivery head properly positioned into the ear. You can look through, make sure you can see the eardrum, click, light flashes to tell you the countdown timer turned on, and you don't have to sit there and turn around or look to see if the countdown timer is working, which typically means that you will move the speculum and the delivery head so that it's improperly placed in the ear canal if you have to turn and look. So we wanted to make sure that you could focus on the patient and deliver the stimulus properly. Therefore, we added the light flashing on and off just to give you feedback that the unit has made connection between the delivery head and the actual device. So here's the control display. The control display has an excellent viewing angle. It gives you the ability to see the display while you stay close to your patient, no matter where you are in the room. So if you're to the left or to the right or right in front, you can easily see this display. And I believe it's a very intuitive layout. Now my mom is, she'd probably get upset if I tell you her real age, but you know, she was not raised on computers. Um, she's just now started learning her iPad. But when we were developing this, I gave this layout to my mother and said, okay, can you tell me how you would change between warm and cool? How you think you would change the warm degrees up or down? She had never seen it before and she could quickly look at this and understand how to use it. And I think that's a good test because if my mom can use it, I believe that our customers can use it too. So it's a very intuitive layout. Orange is the warm, blue is the cool, up and down to change the temperatures, the set temperatures. You have seconds, so this is your countdown timer and how you change it with the plus or minus. The liters per minute is the flow, so that turns the flow on and off for the airflow. And then over here, you have a little button that changes the, the intensity of the beep that tells you that the irrigation should stop. So we're going to talk about temperature right now. You can set the temperature to match your workflow. So the cool temperatures can be set between 12 and 37 degrees Celsius, warm between 37 and 50 degrees Celsius, and this is adjustable in one-tenth of a degree. The default is 24 degrees Celsius and 50 degrees Celsius. Why is this the default? Because it's proven that these elicit comparable responses to water irrigation, and this is based on published data. So if you want the air irrigation to have the same outcome or the same caloric response, as the water irrigation, you need to use 24 degrees Celsius and 50 degrees Celsius. You can choose which temperature you want to the ICS AirCal to start up with. So do you want to start with cools or do you want to start with warms? The default in the system is cool. If you're using an Odometrix VNG ENG system, you want to make sure that the startup matches your caloric test battery. So if you start with left ear cool, make sure that your irrigator starts with cool. If you start with right ear warm, make sure your irrigator starts up in warm. The other thing you can do is set the irrigation duration to match your workflow or the immediate need. And what does that mean? So the time right here is shown at 60 seconds. 60 seconds is the default. This can be changed from 1 to 99 seconds. We use 60 seconds because again, it's proven to elicit a comparable response as water irrigation. So 24 degrees C, 50 degrees C, and 60 seconds duration. Why is it crucial that the stored duration can easily be overrode? So if a patient exhibits hyperstimulation and the irrigation has to be stopped prematurely, you want to note the duration in seconds. So let's say that you did the irrigation, they started to hyperstimulate, you stopped at 45 seconds. You want to make sure that all the other caloric irrigations are at that same duration. So you're going to want to do the other ones at 45 seconds so that you can be able to compare and calculate the unilateral weakness. So to easily change the duration, you just use the plus and minus. Change it, and then when you click your irrigator head trigger button, then it's going to go from 45 seconds and count down to zero. So this number 18 is just showing you that it had counted down and this was, it's at 18 seconds, so you have 18 seconds left. Once it continues counting down, once it reaches zero, then you will hear a beep at the end. So let's talk about setting the flow rate to match your workflow. You have the option of four to 10 liters per minute. The default is eight liters per minute. Why is the default eight? Because this is what's proven to elicit comparable responses 
as water irrigation. So again, 24 degrees Celsius for cool, 50 degrees Celsius for warm, 60 seconds of duration, and a flow rate of 8 liters per minute. If you use those settings, you will have a comparable response as water irrigation. So the set irrigation duration timeout beep intensity can be changed. So the duration, like I said before, the duration timer counts down from the set time to zero seconds. Once it reaches zero, a beep is sounded to alert the clinician to stop irrigating. This beep allows the clinician to focus on the patient. There is no need to continuously check the duration countdown timer, so the clinicians can concentrate on tasking the patient and watching their response during irrigation. The intensity of the beep can be set to the level the clinician desires. So there's four settings. The default is two. So you can make it louder or you can make it softer, depending on your work environment, depending on your own hearing as a tester, um, but you can change that level so that you can make sure that you can hear that beep when it goes off. And then you can store the settings you want. So if you decide to change from the default settings, what you would do is set your settings the way you want them and then choose whether you want warm or cool as your startup, hold that button. So if I wanted warm, I would press this warm button right here, hold it for three seconds until a one second beep sounds. That way I know my settings have been locked in and my irrigator will start up and warm. When you turn the unit on, the airflow comes on and the light on the irrigator head comes on. So within 60 seconds, you are ready to start irrigating. No need to turn anything else on. One thing we worked really hard on with the ICS AirCal was to make sure it was small, portable, and especially quiet. An air pump is obviously needed to generate the air stimulus. These pumps unfortunately generate noise, but building a quieter system than the predecessor, the NCA 200, was important. We worked diligently to house and soundproof the air pump. Why is quiet important? Well, during caloric irrigation, you should task the patient. Many patients not only have vestibular symptoms, but also have hearing loss and or tinnitus. Trying to compete with the noise of the irrigator when tasking the patient is unnecessary. We wanted to make your job easier. Turn on the airflow when you are not using it. The pump is still on, but the air will not be coming out of the head, further reducing the competing noise. So I want to show you a couple of things. This is the old NCA 200, and this is the new ICS AirCal. And if you look here, this measurement was actually taken with the Oracle FreeFit in live mode. But if you look here, the pink is the ICS AirCal and the purple is the NCA 200. So the difference, overall difference, is about 13 dB. 13 dB may not sound like a lot, but I'm going to show you some, uh, play some WAV files where I recorded the noise from the ICS AirCal and from the NCA 200. I want you to hear the difference. So first let's do the NCA 200. This is the sound of the NCA 200 with airflow on. This is the sound of the NCA 200 with airflow off. This is the sound of the air cow with airflow on. This is the sound of the air cow with airflow off. So you can hear the difference. The air cow is much quieter. And the microphone was sitting in the exact same spot. The two irrigators were sitting in the exact same spot when these measurements were taken. And the, when you have the airflow on and it's not in someone's ear, then you can hear that it's noisy. But what you really need to take from this is when the airflow is off, when you don't have that noise from the airflow, which when you have it in the patient's ear, you won't hear it as much, that the ICS AirCal is quite quiet. And again, that's really important so that you can communicate with your patient while you're irrigating. So again, small, quiet, and portable. It's a very small footprint. The ICS AirCal easily stacks onto the Charter 200 or Hortman Vestlab systems. We know space is often limited in clinics, and a nice, tidy workspace makes the patient more comfortable as well. 
So the other thing we add is the cradle. Everybody told us before that that head needs a home. So safe storage for the delivery head was a priority. You choose how to install the cradle on the left or the right and with the irrigator on the edge or set back on the table. So you can, right now, the way your picture is showing, the um, cradle is tilted down. That's so that the cable can go down towards the floor. So if it was on the edge of a table, that's the way you'd want it set. If you had it pushed further back on the counter or on a table, then you want to adjust that so that it's parallel to the table. And then the irrigator, the cable will come straight out and it'll sit on that table quite nicely. There's several adjustments you can make to the cradle to suit your environment. So staying close to your patient, we felt is very important. We want to make sure that you can stay by your patient while you're doing caloric irrigation. So as previously mentioned, these features keep you closer to your patient. The display has a superior viewing angle. The LED light in the delivery head flashes when the countdown timer is initiated. The countdown timer beep alerts you to cease irrigation. So you don't have to pay attention to the main unit. You can pay attention to your patient. The other thing is, is you have the option, the unit comes with both, but you have the option of using the foot switch or the delivery head trigger button. It's your choice. Use either one to control the irrigator and Odometrics BNG ENG systems. So when you first push the foot pedal or the trigger button on the AirCal delivery head, it'll start the countdown timer. So either one works. The other nice thing is that the AirCal can be integrated with the Odometrics BNG ENG system, so either the Charter 200 or the Hortman Vest Lab system. When you choose the protocol, for example, left cool, it'll automatically select the correct temperature on the irrigator. So if you change to a warm protocol, let's say your irrigator booted up into cool or started up in cool, and then you do the two cool, right cool, left cool, and then it goes to warm on the protocol, it'll automatically change the irrigator to warm. So you don't even have to go over there and touch the main unit of the irrigator. When you push the button on the delivery head or on the foot pedal, it simultaneously starts data acquisition tracing along with the countdown timer. Second press will either center the tracing or start the video recording, depending on if you're doing VNG, ENG, or how you have your software set up. And when not performing a caloric, you can use the foot switch to start any test. Very helpful when performing positional tests, especially Dix Hall Pike. So now let's talk about the water level display and maintenance. So the other thing we did when we developed the ICS AirCal is we went back and looked at the maintenance records and what were the common issues people had with the old NCA 200. So yes, the air irrigator has a water reservoir. The water is used in the air cow to cool the water below room temperature. Our goal with the air cow was to make the clinician aware of the water level to avoid overheating. The water level display shows the clinician the level of the water and also changes from blue to orange, warning you when it's time to refill. So over here, see these little droplets of water, full, half full, empty, and this blue bar. Once the blue bar starts moving down past half full, it turns orange. You need to make sure that you replace the water in the unit. Now, not only do we want to tell you you needed to replace the water in the unit, we wanted to make it easy for you to replace the water in the unit. So here's how you refill the water reservoir. Another goal, like I said, was making the refill of the water much easier than the NCA 200. You remove this small cover on the top of the air cow, remove the inner cover, which has these little rubber rings on it, so it's kind of a suction fit, and then with the supplied silicone collapsible funnel, you pop open the funnel, slip it in there, and you can pour your water in, and then you replace the covers. You want to make sure you use distilled water. That's very important. Always use distilled water in an air irrigator or even your water irrigator. So, last thing, if you want to learn more about caloric irrigation in general, Dr. Cameron Barine has kindly done three videos for us. One, looking at the effects of head position on caloric responses. You need to make sure you put that person 30 degrees so that the lateral canal is in the proper place for stimulation with irrigation. The next thing is the rationale for alerting during caloric testing. So why do you, should you task the patient? When we say task the patient, that's when we say things like, name a girl's name that starts with an A. Name a girl's name that starts with a B. They don't have to be difficult tasks. 
but this is a really good video explaining why tasking is important. And lastly, comparing water versus air caloric stimulation. Now 80% of our customers order air irrigators, but we still have some skeptics out there that air and water are comparable. So this talks about all the data and all the research that has looked into air and water caloric irrigation and why it's important to have those settings, why it's important that the air irrigator be able to cool below room temperature. If it can't cool below room temperature, you're not going to have comparable response with air irrigation as you would with water irrigation. So these are three great videos that Cameron Barine has put together. Um, there's also a link there showing you his BNG ENG course where he does a great job talking about caloric irrigations as well as the full test battery for VNG ENG. Again, here's that wonderful ICS AirCal, and we hope you've learned a lot and that you enjoy using the unit.